My name's Keith Oliver. I work here as senior pet conservator. For this exhibition, it's really remounting works temporarily. There's a large collection of 350 works. The majority of those, those are working drawings, I would say. By working drawings, I mean not finished works, but second exploring ideas. get the idea of that is actually observing the world he sees around him very quickly, trying to capture that instance, the essence of life really. He's using very particular techniques I think because of the limits of the auditorium and the, the dimness of the light and I think he's creating for himself new ways of drawing using different methods, different sorts of paper and I think that comes across in these working drawings. If you look at some of the early drawings from the 1880s, they're all quite, well, I would describe as self-conscious, very small. But they developed to using ledger books. Um, ledger books have obviously got lots of lines, coloured lines. If you imagine these things would actually be quite visible in the dim light of musicals, so they're actually quite a, an accurate guide. There's various simple methods in paper conservation of where you can use transmitted light or Reagan light. They'll show more than you would find by just looking at the object in normal light, in how he was pressing on paper to transfer one drawing to the next, or how he was applying chalks to the back of his drawings to transfer from one to another. The very simple ways of doing things, the sort of things that I remember doing as a child. You can see the way he's thinking and exploring different compositions. We were looking at things in six times magnification, which is probably just enough really for uh, showing different lines and different pressure. I was applying a stylus to transfer either directly or using things like carbon paper, which we found. He's transferring drawings from his initial studies. And I think for him, the initial drawing is always the starting point. And I think it's the thing that really sort of excites him. Some of them you can't actually see the figures being placed around uh, furniture, uh, which fits in with, there's a theory that his compositions are almost like a, a theatrical stage set where the figures are placed within this environment. There was a number of drawings that he collated throughout his life and stuck onto board and I think it shows the importance of drawings in his art and drawings in his composition and paintings. These were never exhibited, they're quite private things and the things that were never meant to be seen by anybody but obviously very special to him. But when you actually look at the drawings themselves, you can actually see that they had a different life before that. They, they've got discoloration around the edges where they're obviously still pulling, form part of a book. We were fortunate enough to be able to recreate three of his original backing sheets through this exhibition. Uh, when we were mounting them, uh, there was a collection that was done in the 60s. Fortunately, in this case, the mounts are actually had a bit of a shortcut um, approach and just cut the backboards and reposition them. So we managed to jigsaw them back together again and find out the original sizes of his sheets that he was using um, and put them back together as Sickert had originally intended. He sees the original drawing as the magic, you know, something that he actually always refers back to and he doesn't want to lose that. So he's actually transferring from his original image to another sheet and hoping to sort of capture that magic of his original. He's quite a traditionalist, and I think that's quite important to always remember. Drawing was, for him, the essence of art. I think Degas, who taught him about drawing and how you can make as many drawings as you want and you should do, I think drawing is something that I think is very special to see.